Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. I'm Annie with Odyssea Cane Corso. I do a lot with my dogs. I um, I do I participate in a sport called formerly known as Schutzen. It's called IGP now. Um, but that's my main thing that I do. So that involves tracking and obedience and protection. And then I also show them in AKC confirmation. And I do a little bit of um, like competitive AKC obedience stuff. And I'm also a small hobby breeder. This will be uh, my fifth litter in about six years. This litter is out of um, a bitch I own. Her name is Rania. Um, she is she has an FH, which is, a, which is an advanced tracking title, and she has a BH, which is a obedience title, um, and a CGC, and just stuff like that. And then she's also an AKC Grand Champion. Um, I showed her and finished her myself. I finished her really fast out of the bread bite class, which I'm pretty happy about. And then Brutale is just a beautiful dog. Um, he's been doing really well showing. He's kind of a young dog also, like Rania, um, but he's been really successful showing last year and this year, and his show career is really kind of taking off. He has um, an amazing temperament. Like, he's just, he's really, he's a really solid dog. He's um, no nonsense, but he's not super high energy, and he loves his ball. So he's a pretty high drive dog, but not, annoyingly energetic. He's just, he's great. He's a really nice dog. He is an AKC Grand Champion and he's, I forget if he's bronze or silver, but he's done quite a lot. And then I know that he's also um, up there as far as national rankings go. And then I think he has um, like some introductory obedience titles. I think he has a CGC and he has his Rally Novice title. Both of the parents are two and a half years old, so it's their first litter for both dogs which isn't necessarily my, you know, a great thing about breeding them together since neither of them are proven. Um, but I like the dog enough for me to think it was worth it and to try it. Um, plus I'm really familiar with both of the dogs in those families. So, you know, Brutale's mom and his um, nieces and nephews. I know a lot of dogs there. And then obviously I know Rania's family. So. That's why I ended up breeding them together. I think they have traits that really complement each other very nice. Rania has beautiful structure. Um, and I think Brutale brings some things that she maybe lacks. Like she's a little on the small side. She doesn't have a ton of bone and he really has a lot of that, a lot of those nice things. And just, yeah, I think that they will complement each other really well. So because this is both of their first litter, it's a little bit hard to judge this litter because I can't look at other dogs Rania has produced or other dogs Brutale has produced. But I do like what I'm seeing so far. The temperaments seem to be really even and kind of all the puppies are pretty much the same based on that. There are definitely some puppies that look a little mo more like Brutale and some that look a little bit more like Rania, um, which isn't, you know, uncommon and yeah, but I'm really happy with them so far. I was very pleasantly surprised at how good of a job Rania did as a mother. She was, um, you know, she's, she's excellent. She really, she checks on them all the time. She fed everybody for, you know, the first several weeks. Um, and even now, you know, they're almost eight weeks old. She's a little bit obsessive about them, which, you know, is really good, even if it's slightly annoying. <laughs> it's good that she's so into them. So once I've decided on um, a breeding pair, then I will email everyone on my waiting list, obviously, and I'll put an, um, just an announcement up on my website and or Facebook, yeah. So finding homes is, 
a little bit like a Rubik's Cube. There are a lot of moving parts and a lot of considerations. Um, it starts with people are interested in getting a puppy. Um, usually they'll contact me uh, through email. And first, I really like to have everyone fill out an application. It's a couple pages long, so that already, like a lot of people who just want their puppy right now, like, you know, that kind of already filters a certain amount of people out. Um, everyone who fills out the application, they get a response email. And then after that, I start combing through the individual applications and kind of looking at the questions. Um, I look at where they live in relation to me. Um, I prefer homes that are closer, you know, family homes um, and or people who will do something with a dog, which is also important to me based on all the stuff I do with them. Um, so that the application is where I begin the process. So some of the questions on the application are, you know, like who's in the household with you? How many other cats, dogs, whatever? How many other pets do you have? Have you owned a large breed dog before? Um, I ask a couple questions about training. Um, you know, how do you feel about crate training? Cause that's really important to me. Um, stuff like that. Yeah, like have you ever uh, surrendered a dog to a shelter, given one back to a breeder, given one away or, and why did you do that? You know, like there can be plenty of legitimate reasons for someone who has to give up a dog, um, but there can also not be. <laughs> um, so yeah, questions like that. And then there are a couple write-in answers, like why do you want this dog? Why is it important to you? After the application, I kind of start to narrow it down. And then I start picking out the applications that suit, that I think will make the best homes. So, and what exactly that entails is a little bit different depending on my needs too, right? So if I have, um, if I, I like to make sure that I place the puppies as close to me as possible because then if something happens, I can help out or I can be a little bit more involved if I need to be. Whereas if I send a dog across the country, that's not really a reality, right? Like, um, or it makes that a lot more difficult. So, um, yeah, I definitely kind of look at geography and look at um, what they put on the application and just what I feel by reading it, um, you know, how serious they are and how much time and effort they'll put into their puppy. Once I've gone through all the applications and narrowed it down to the ones that I really like, then I reach back out and kind of describe the availability, like, hey, I'm going to have a litter in a year or I have a litter right now or whatever the time frame is. And then, um, once we've spoken on the phone, there's a little bit of a phone interview after the application, that's when I'll accept a deposit if somebody wants that. So who picks the puppy is, is really the Rubik's Cube of the whole thing. Um, there are a lot of moving parts, um, but the three main factors are obviously the buyer and their preference. Um, what's suitable for them and how does that fit into their preferences? Um, what do I have available? Um, and then also kind of how, how does it fit into what I want to keep doing with my program? So, you know, if I have a really nice dog, um, I want to send it with someone who's going to do something with it. If I have a dog that I think has a strong working potential, I'm going to give priority to someone who has demonstrated to me that they're going to do something with the dog and work the dog or show the dog or whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, obviously if they are willing and or able to keep that dog around for future use, if it does turn out as nice as I hope it does, that that's a huge bonus to me and that helps me a lot as a breeder because I can't keep them all in my yard and they should all be living with families. So those are kind of the factors that revolve around each other in placing the dogs ultimately. Most of the families that I seek out are just, they just want pets. So most of those people aren't really, you know, that interested in breeding rights in the first place. Um, and that's more important to me than... I've had better luck talking people into keeping a dog intact, even though they just want a pet, than, you know, the other way around and trying to rein someone in who's like, no, I really want to breed this dog. It's a little bit more difficult. I definitely understand when people are paying a lot of money for a dog, they want they want to own the dog entirely, right? Like they want to pick their dog and then they want their breeding rights. 
and I completely understand that viewpoint. Um, it's just not how I'm choosing to do things right now, and I, I can't be mad at people who want that, I'm just not the breeder for them. Um, the reason I do that is, you know, a lot, some of it is, um, you know, is selfishly, like I want access to what I want access to, and I don't want my name attached to something that is out there that ends up falling into the wrong hands or causing problems, and I feel like not selling the breeding rights minimizes that a little bit. It's not foolproof, you know, I mean, sometimes we misjudge people even if we have all the applications and all the interviews and everything, you know, bad stuff can still happen, but I do feel like kind of not selling the breeding rights and being a little bit more diligent about which, which puppy goes where is beneficial in the long run and minimizes risk. It doesn't eliminate it, but I do think it minimizes it. The contract that I sell the dogs under is really there to protect the buyer, it's there to protect the puppy, and it's there to protect me. So the contract kind of describes, you know, in the event of worst case scenarios, right? Like the dog is unhealthy or something bad happens, it stipulates that I should get the dog back. Um, you know, kind of like a right of first refusal kind of thing. Um, it also stipulates no breeding and kind of just basic stuff that I think helps ensure the well-being of the dog. Obviously it's just paper, so it really depends on that, pe you know, the family's commitment to that document. Um, but I do think it really helps to outline my expectations and it makes everything very clear, right? I do the tails and the ears before the puppies leave the house. For If you buy a dog from me, it's not optional. Um, and again, I understand if people don't want that, but that's my choice. And it's important to me for a couple of reasons. So number one, it's a traditional look of the dog. That's how they're supposed to look. And usually when people ask for natural ears, um, one, I wanna make sure that we say like, it's actually not natural because in nature there are no ears that are floppy like that, right? So we're really restoring how the ear is supposed to be from breeding that we've made the ears floppy. Sometimes I get families that say like, oh, well, we just want the dog to look less scary, um, which I also get. And in those instances, usually I recommend just a different breed. Bull Mastiffs are awesome dogs. There are a lot of dogs that fit other bills. This breed is important for me that it looks the way it's supposed to look. We do a lot to prepare the puppies for their new home. So um, they're, my litters are whelped in the house and then when it's time for them to start weaning, I put them out in their weaning pen. Um, but even like from the moment that they can kind of walk and they're a little more ambulatory and their eyes are open, um, I start litter box training. Um, that has been really, really helpful. It's amazing how easily they take to it and how much they really want to use their litter box and not potty where, you know, they sleep and eat. In addition to that, I start crate training them. Um, once they're about five weeks old, I start that. Uh, so by the time they go home, you know, I'm not, they're still baby dogs, so they're not crate trained fully or potty trained, but they really have a, they have a great head start. Um, I start a little bit of just shaping behaviors and luring and like, building the things that they need to learn for obedience later. Um, you know, we don't do a lot of, there's nothing formal happening because they're babies, but we do try to do a lot with them. Um, I try to, you know, offer different kinds of stimulus every day, like I'll change their toys out or put new obstacles in their pen, just that kind of stuff. Um, get them acclimated to different noises and, you know, I try to have them meet dogs that I consider safe around them so they're not just seeing my dogs and you know, obviously there are lots of people coming over to see them so that's not really a problem. But we really try to expose them to as much as possible. So every dog I sell goes home with um, a puppy packet and in the puppy packet there is um, like a guide on what I've done with the puppy, kind of the training that I think is most beneficial. It talks about crate training and potty training and grooming and kind of very basic information about rearing your puppy and then um, your contract is in there, um, 
health information, that kind of stuff as well. So the process, even though it might seem extensive, which I guess it is, or some might think it isn't, but for me, it makes me feel like it minimizes risk of the dogs falling into a position where they're not gonna be cared for properly or where the family is gonna be like, we can't handle this dog, it's way too much for us. So it really serves to protect everyone involved, including me, including the puppy owners, and ultimately the dog. Ultimately, I think this process helps the breed because it minimizes the risk of the breed ending up in the news, for example, for the wrong reasons. And kind of the flip side of that is that seeing the dogs in successful homes, whether it's a show home or a working home, or even if it's just a great companion, you know, that's well-mannered and a loved family pet, that's good for the breed, right? Like, that's what people should be seeing. That should be the representation. This is Annie with Odyssey Iconic Corso. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope this video helps people understand the pet buying process a little better. And even though it might seem rigorous, uh, I hope it kind of sheds light on why uh, it's best for the puppy, the new owners, and really the breed overall. <laughs>